with true American heroes. It's the last race of the Formula H2O Rec Racing League season. So divers, start your scooters. It's time to swap some paint at one of Florida's classic attractions. Who is Scuba Nation? Billy C. Austin born and raised. What are we doing? What are we doing? Loves a grill to the ear for guitar. Biz and Mitch, Southern boy. Crazy deep fried and a toe tapping percussion. And every other diver on the planet. Two ordinary guys with a thirst for getting wet and exploring all things scuba. We are Scuba Nation. One nation underwater. I'm Mitch. I'm Billy C. And this is my new friend, Princess Wondrous. <laughs> we are at one of the original crown jewels of Florida attractions, Wiki Wachi. Not the Rex and Reefs this time, but for racing. We're here for underwater scooter racing. The Rec Racing League is having their finals here. A champion will be crowned this weekend. We have veterans from the Iraq and Afghanistan war, veterans with disabilities, but they're participating, they're racing, and those boys are ready to get it on out there. <laughs> so divers start. Start your engines this time on Scuba Nation. Wiki Wachi is world famous for the mermaid shows they put on here. They've been swimming their tails off since 1947. And as a native Floridian, it's not only nostalgic for me to visit, but to be able to dive this spring is going to be a real treat for me. Yeah, and unlike other race venues, they have an underwater auditorium so all the non-divers can watch the race. There's spectacular visibility because it's a Florida spring, and the kids will love it. Because not only do they have the mermaid shows, they've got the beach, they've got the water park, they've got animal shows. Your tour of Florida is not complete without a trip to Wiki Watch. So to kick things off, let's go talk to the commissioner of the league and friends of the program. Do you mean Joe Big Fluffy Weatherby? The very one. Oh. And he's going to get us started. Formula H2O Racing and the Wiki Wachi Warrior Challenge is racing while using scuba diving with diver propulsion vehicles, DPVs. Uh, we call them scooters. Wait a minute, Commissioner. Not all scooters are creeping. Underwater is, is highly competitive. I'm, I'm I would call the reigning champion at this point. And so far have won two races. Have a great time at it. There are many different kinds of scooters. This sort of looks like the race in Star Wars. Uh, you got some that people ride on, some that people get pulled behind, some that mount on their tanks. So there's lots of different configurations. Our competitors are going to be blazing along between two and four and a half miles an hour. A lot of these scooters are really high horsepower. Uh, Divex for one, the Cuda. We're putting out in excess of 75 pounds of thrust. They're racing around, uh, they're cornering, drive fast, turn left, just like NASCAR. This has given us a new way to go out and get, have fun. Yeah, and, absolutely. And divers, hey, this is, this is great, let's go out and have a good time. But in NASCAR, they'll tell you, if you ain't rubbing, you ain't racing. So holding on one of these things underwater with scuba gear on is sometimes almost insane. At the start, you can hear people revving their machine. <laughs> And it sounds a lot like Formula One. Underwater, these machines make a sound, so you can hear them revving and revving. This has been the fastest thing out there. So the strategy has just been to try and not go too fast. When the green flag goes, they all go zooming off at once, and the start is unbelievable. Because I don't want to make it unfair for other people, and the one thing about the CUDA is it's almost an unfair race. So Mike, who's on your radar for tomorrow's race? Dave Yuloa. <laughs> I love it. So this is something to watch tomorrow. tomorrow. We've never run head-to-head -head with the two summer scooters. I love to win. So tomorrow is the first chance head-to-head, -head, you two guys. I love to win. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart. Of the there you go. <laughs> of, of going head-to-head. -head. So this is something to keep an eye on for tomorrow. I love my machine. 
and there might be a little bump, a little shoulder kicking here and there. And you're kind of checking out your competition left and right. The race begins, it's drive past, turn left. Because I've got a very fast scooter. A little too wide action going on between you guys. Maybe we have some too wide action going on. Absolutely. The first turn is a little bit of a jumble. You know, everybody's trying to get a good position to make the first turn. Um, you know, I wish I could tell you more of what that looks like, but typically I'm in the front. So, <laughs> but yeah, the corners are tight, and then and, and you know you have to go below or above. You hear stories about how bad it is back there, but everybody's jockeying for position. Uh, the one who gets on the inside pulls away. If you blow some bubbles into somebody's uh, propellers, that can slow them down. Um, and uh, and the, everybody's pretty serious about it. And then you're just counting laps. And by the fourth lap of a five-lap race, you're you're like counting in your head. Was that lap one? Was that lap three, five? So you know you, you don't want to quit on lap four. Go. I won when you got one lap to go. That offers some big prizes for this league that we've declined to take because we want to make sure everybody's behaving in a responsible fashion. So this is going to be a good race. Well, what happens in Wiki stays in Wiki. <laughs> what happens in Wiki stays in Wiki. Stop checking me in on Facebook, people. Yeah. <laughs> Formula 8 Sua Racing, we have league members uh, from very young, you know, 18 years old, all the way to in their 60s. Um, this is a sport that's open for everybody. This is a sport where fat, old, loudmouth guys can be heroes. Um, we got people that have been diving for 35 and 40 years up, coming up squealing like schoolgirls and laughing. They're having so much fun. It's a very approachable, easy group. Welcome aboard. Next on Scuba Nation, it's time for our first race. And we get to talk to some of our true American heroes as they get ready to swap pain underwater. Stay tuned. All the world. Beauty in the deep. The fascinating beauty of the underwater world where we explore the mystery of ancient fable. The fable of mermaids who live at Wikiwachi. Two of the stars in this world's greatest underwater spectacle swim out to perform graceful acrobatic routines in the crystal clear water, set against the background of Florida's underwater Grand Canyon. Wikiwachi is the largest single spring in Florida, pouring forth 168 million gallons of water daily, and always at a temperature of 74 degrees. It's snack time. And this proves that fish do not fear people. These friendly little fellows have learned that every hour during the day, at every performance, food will be served. And by such a charming hostess. Mermaids get appetites, too. This is probably one of the most difficult feats of all the unique features at Wikiwachi. Actually eating underwater. Drinking underwater, too? Of course, but you have to be real thirsty. Nation. As a veteran myself, I was pumped to hear the racing lead and fighting veterans with disabilities to the race this year. These guys are incredible. Scuba diving gives them a sense of freedom. For myself, it was an honor and a privilege to dive with them here at Wikiwachi for these races. Boy, I can't wait to do it again. Well, early on, uh, from the very, from the, just about from the very outset of the Rec Racing League and Formula H2O Racing, uh, we, we had spoken with a couple of wounded warrior groups. Who's ready to have some fun? I got introduced to scuba diving after I was injured. A program came through the hospital, Walter Reed, and you know they said, you know, this is a great opportunity to get out there and do something different from what I was used to doing. So I said, you know, I'll give it a try. You know, we did a couple of cool things, and then we got out and so doing the open sea uh, certification, and I loved it. You know, scuba diving is actually a, a great way to do uh, therapy and just to get out there and uh, meet up new people and you know have some fun in the water. These, kind of, these scooter runs speak to mobility issues. You know, scuba diving uh, came into my life before I was injured. Uh, kind of rekindled after I was injured just, just because they encourage you to get out there, get in the water, and, and do something different. 
and uh, it really has helped. Every organization has put in time and, and the effort that makes today possible. A guy who a guy who has trouble moving around on land with the scooter and the scuba gear is now is now an ace competitor in the water here. It's a real privilege. I feel very blessed and very honored by all these guys that volunteer their time and, and their money to be able to make events like this possible because these kind of things really do um, benefit us. The, the, feedback's, the feedback's been extraordinary because, you know, a, a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys who, that, and this is my own personal observation, but a lot of these guys have been special forces, they're, they're competitive, they're top shape. And then, you know, in the service of our country, that some of this stuff's been kind of catastrophic. Benefit us in more ways than, than are obvious. They do a lot for us. Um, it's like psychological therapy. It really helps us to feel normal again and um, takes us out of that, that sense of feeling like we're disabled if, if we are ever... Most of us don't have too much trouble with that, but even when you feel good about yourself, it, it always helps to get a little boost. These guys are right back into this competitive space, and you know all those natural, all those natural instincts they have are excited. We got people from all over the country, from wounded warrior, from various five different wounded warrior groups here to do this. So I think that speaks to the popularity of it. But it reminds me that I'm not limited to what I can do, and it, it helps with my recovery process a uh, hundred times more. What a great group of American heroes, truly an inspiration to all of us. Now it's finally time to see the divers in action. We all start swimming over to the race arena, gathering at the starting line. Cameras are getting into positions. Announcers take their seats. Crowd is getting restless. Let's get it on. And they're off. The race is underway. Boogity, boogity, boogity. And Lisa Manji breaks out of the early pack. She's driving in some clean water. Does not have to worry about bubbles from the other scooters. And that is important because she's got great biz. Lisa Manji from Underwater Unlimited in Miami, wearing the Pegasus Thruster, completes lap numero uno. And for you non-Spanish speakers out there, that's lap number one. Race fans are eating this stuff up, man. The crowd is getting into it. They're loving it. Yeah, baby. Lisa is taking a commanding lead now. The other racers have the work cut out for them. Lisa's coming around the final turn. I think it's hers to lose. Lisa crosses the finish line to take her second first place win, and by a time of 6 minutes and 32 seconds. Way to go, Wheezy! Congratulations, Lisa, on an awesome win. Up next, the main event, the gloves come off, it's going to be a battle, I'm pumped, Wiki Watch will never be the same. Stay tuned. Race of the day, final race of 2011, the unlimited class, and there they go. Wayne Turner taking the lead, Uola. Vavona in last place. Vavona, our grand champion, in last place. Oh no, David Ulola is getting tangled up with the first buoy. That's going to set him back. He's now loose. Wayne Turner on the silent submerged Magnus. Terry Hatton right on top of it on the Magnus Express. Michael Bavona, who started last, our grand champion, making up ground on the Divex. That's three guys right at the start-finish line together. It's starting to look like Bavona's to lose at the start of the fifth turn. And David Ulola, who had problems at the start, is going to have a lot to make up here. There was one thing I noticed about Vavona. He didn't kick at all. He's in Key West. Come and watch the other racers. They're all flipping their fins. That dive X is a mule hauling the mail, and he's got a commanding lead now. 
Hey, Vavona, I'll tell you this. On the next race, you're giving me the keys to that Dive X. I definitely want to take it around the park a few times. You all are trying to make some ground. Cole's in the fourth. Turner in second. Terry Hatton in third. Toward the start-finish line. Fourth lap. Starting lap number four, I'm told. Lap number four. Bavona in control of the race now with a bit of a lead. About a body length lead as he goes around that tight corner. Wayne Turner in second. Terry Hatton in third. Bavona holding the back of the pack. But now he's in the lead. The shark was for Uloa has had all kind of problems in the race. Now coming to the start-finish line. Bavona now with a bit of a lead along the back stretch. Going past the castle. No looking back for Vavona now. He is in a groove. I don't see anybody taking him. We expected a battle with Ulola today, but Dave had some trouble at the start. Vavona, who started last, has actually taken over. Turner and Hatton fighting for second and third. Vavona still in the lead. It's a tight battle for second and third place. Hatton and Turner for second and third. Ulola trying to make some ground. Pulls in the fourth. Vavona still in the lead. Vavona with a big lead now. Half a lap to go for Mike Vavona, our grand champion. Looks like he's going to take home the championship. Dave Ulola now in his final lap. Vavona in the final turn. Our grand champion is going to take home the championship. Mike Vavona crossing in a time of... Four minutes and 41 seconds, he gets the checkered flag and comes home with the championship. And here's a tight battle, second and third. And it looks like Wayne Turner. Wayne Turner just hits Terry Hatton. A photo finish for second and third. Here comes Dave Uola. And all kind of problems there, Louis number one. Sharp Whisperer finishing the race in championship style, not giving up despite the problems early. So 2011 has crowned its champion. Michael Vavona coming home with another title for the Wiki Watchy Warrior Challenge of 2011. Congratulations, Michael. Now I need you to take your scooter over to the pit area because there's a league official that wants to make sure it's street legal. I don't want to thank Joe Weatherby, the Rec Racing League, for a great event. These races are a blast. There's full of surprises too. Yeah, I tell you what, plenty of surprises is right. Plenty of wrinkles, and that Michael's got a big red target painted on his back, being a two-time champ now. I can't wait for the 2012 season. It was also a real thrill for me being a veteran to dive with the disabled veterans that we had here participating in the race. I can't wait to do it again. Scuba Nation, one nation underwater. Thanks for watching.